Guys, Boston Gossip here, coming to you um, the morning after the night before, in the sense that um, I'm recording this Sunday lunchtime. Um, obviously, did instant reaction videos last night to a number of the, the big fights out there, be that uh, the Eubank fight, the Groves fight, the Joshua fight, and I just wanted to come uh, and do another video today, just with a, a bit more of a extended thoughts. You know, the instant reaction videos were being filmed between fights etc so a few more things I wanted to put down um, Eubank Jr really entertaining fighter uh, devastating when allowed to dictate carries real offensive threat if able to get on the inside if able to work up close um, you know a sort of real whirlwind of aggression output an offence. However, for me, question marks remain about Eubank Jr. Uh, and I think the fact of the matter is, is that we must remember the only time Eubank Jr. has fought at world level, uh, he lost. And since then, the level of opponents he's been in with was respectable. Blackwell, Spike O'Sullivan, um, Chudinov, last night Tom Duran, the, the level of opposition he's been in with has been sub-world level in terms of their boxing capability, in terms of their defence, in terms of their movement, and for me, whilst Eubank Jr. has definitely improved from the fighter who stepped into the ring to fight Billy Joe Saunders, it is unclear in my mind if he's improved in the right areas to ensure that the result against Billy Joe Saunders would be different second time round. So, let me expand on that. For me, the problem with Eubank's performance in the Billy Joe Saunders fight, and I've spoken about this at length on various videos in the past, so I won't go into it in too much depth, is that he was unable to set his feet against a slick, awkward opponent, a southpaw who was moving, bending, leaning. Uh, he was also getting peppered with the jab and seemed not to be able to block Billy Joe's jab. Uh, and I think in last night, with his fight against Tom Duran, question marks remain about his ability to box from range and to box from the outside. I appreciate in the first two rounds Eubank used him as a feeling out process and didn't really look to impose his game into the third round. But I thought those two rounds were quite informative. Eubank was very easy to counter. You know, Tom Duran is some way off world level, and Tom Duran was catching Eubank routinely with big counter punches. Now, the Sky commentary team seemed not to mention it at all when Duran connected, but if you watch it back, it is clear to my eye that Tom Duran was landing multiple counter punches per round on Chris Eubank Jr. And Chris Eubank Jr. appeared relatively easy to time when he was throwing from the outside. Now, for the Duran fight, that was irrelevant because when Eubank decided to put the, the pedal to the metal, um, he was able to get on the inside on Duran instantaneously, break him down and stop him with relative ease. My concern with Eubank Jr. is when he faces a different type of opponent, an opponent like Billy Joe Saunders, who's so slick and so awkward, you can't just get onto the inside and him like that. Or an opponent like Gennady Golovkin, rumoured to be his next fight, depending on who you listen to. I mean, Golovkin's power, Golovkin's jab, is going to be on a different level to anything Chris Eubank Jr. has fought before. So, if he can't walk the opponent down, and just drift into the inside instantaneously. There's going to have to be periods of those fights where he is going to have to use his skills from range a bit more. And for me, Eubank's defence um, from range is very porous, very questionable, to the point where I'm not even sure if his defence is questionable, or if I'm honest, if it's just pretty poor. Um... As I say, he was he was pretty much getting hit at well in the Saunders fight by the jab. We saw Spike O'Sullivan land haymakers on him. We saw Tom Duran counter him fairly regularly. And for me, the question remains, what if someone can keep Eubank off them? 
What if they can move? What if they can circle away on the back foot? What if they can jab him and keep him at range by relentlessly jabbing his head off? Um, and I think those defensive frailties haven't been worked on from the Billy Joe Saunders fight moving forward. You know, um, very interesting as to whether this Golovkin versus Saunders fight is actually going to take place. Very, very interesting indeed. Um, you know, the Eubanks have been screaming out that fight for an extended period of time. Um, now, Eddie Hearn has come out and said that the fight is pretty much there to be made, and it can be made within the next 48 hours. Golovkin, Tom Loeffler and their team has taken the bait. Golovkin wants to fight. They're keen to, to take it. And it's no surprise. It's a big money fight for them. It's a huge profile fight for them. And they've hardly got opponents queuing around the block. So it seems that Golovkin's keen. It seems that Eddie Hearn's able to make the fight. Clearly it's going to be a sky pay-per-view. Clearly it's going to sell a lot of tickets. The question now is having called out Golovkin, having made a huge song and dance over that fight for an extended period of time, will the Eubanks actually take it? Now, if you look at Eddie Hearn and Barry Hearn's comments, I think they have huge doubt as to whether the Eubanks will actually sign for that fight. Um, Barry Hearn said the other day he was 55% confident, and Eddie Hearn has routinely made statements of the nature of that fight can be made if everyone involved wants it. You know, For me, the Hearns look like two guys who do not believe Eubank actually wants this fight. And to be honest... It kind of makes sense that they don't want the fight. Golovkin is the top guy at middleweight. He's a guy who is immensely risky. He's a guy who could damage young Eubank's career. And he's a guy who may completely expose him, beat him up. And should that exposure take place, the mystique around Eubank, the marketability around Eubank will possibly struggle. I'm not saying a loss would end his career, but if he was battered, if he was hammered for 12 rounds and beaten up, uh, firstly, will that have long-standing effects in his career? Secondly, will people stop buying into Chris Eubank Jr. as this absolute destroyer that he seems to have got right now? Now, if you watch the IFL TV coverage of the post-fight press conference, Eubank Sr. implied he wanted the fight, Golovkin wanted the fight, Eddie Hearn could make the fight. What he seemed to be suggesting is that um, he was unhappy with the Sky pay-per-view model. And he was unhappy uh, with the percentages Sky were looking to take, and he was going to be after more. Now, that seems very bizarre to me if we consider that in recent months, uh, Anthony Joshua earned £3 million for a British title fight off the Sky pay per view model. It seems pretty bizarre to me if the rumours are true that Charles Martin earned £5 million for a title defence against Anthony Joshua. I mean, that Sky pay per view model seems to be a model that allows fighters to earn a decent lump of money, let's put it that way. Now, for me, if Eubank Jr. and Eubank Sr. do not take this fight because of the Sky pay-per-view model, it is what I would consider a blatant duck. Because surely the Sky pay-per-view model is the most financially beneficial model available to Eubank Jr. in British boxing. He's not going to get a deal from Box Nation, from Channel 5, from ITV, uh, as he would do for fighting Golovkin on Sky pay-per-view. And to me, if they use that as a reason not to take the fight, bearing in mind the Sky pay-per-view model has presumably stayed consistent throughout the course of negotiations, it is a blatant attempt at avoiding the fight and a blatant attempt at just using Gennady Golovkin's name to increase the hype around their fighter and to increase their marketability. Uh, let's be honest, the Eubanks are very, very uh, aware of hype. They're very aware of marketing themselves. Everything they do, the way they stand in the ring, the way they showboat when Chris Eubank Jr. fights, uh, the ring entrances, uh, you know, the interviews outside the ring, uh, the, the attempt at going to the Olympics the on-off negotiations for the Saunders rematch. I mean, for me, if they don't take this fight, what they have done is use this Gennady Golovkin saga purely to raise his profile and raise his name, and with some success. But it is going to get to the point, you know, I'm a, someone, 
you know, I really enjoy watching Chris Eubank Jr. fight, and I really enjoy his press conferences and enjoy his build-up and all of that sort of things. But if next time out we're looking at Chris Eubank Jr. versus John Ryder, or Chris Eubank Jr. versus Sergei Kometsky, or Chris Eubank Jr. versus one of those fighters, it is getting to the point where I'm thinking, hang on a sec, you offered the Jacobs fight, you were offered the Saunders fight, and you were offered the Golovkin fight, having called out Golovkin for month after month after month, and... You know, we've given you a few buys. We let you fight Blackwell. We let you fight uh, Spike O'Sullivan, Sullivan. We let you fight uh, Tom Duran. But it is time now for a big fight. I mean, Eubank Jr. is cruising at the level he's fighting at. He is showing himself to be well above British level. Um, and, you know, with the hype surrounding him, with all the comments that they're making, you would think that it would be time for them to take the step up and to... I'm not necessarily saying fight a Golovkin, but maybe a Jacobs or a Saunders. Um, and, you know, it would be. let me just say it this way. It would be very telling what happens with this Golovkin fight. You know, Eddie Hearn has only got Eubank Jr. for a two-fight deal. He's not trying to build Eubank Jr. like he is with Anthony Joshua. He's not necessarily concerned about Eubank Jr.'s career over the next five years. For Eddie Hearn, if that Golovkin fight is available right now, they're going to take it. That sells thousands of tickets, that sells thousands of pay-per-views today. You know, it'd be different if the Eubanks had shown great loyalty to the Hearns and Matchroom, but they haven't. So, with that potential windfall in front of Hearn, Hearn's going to push for it now. And I expect that should Eubank Senior not take the fight because of some Sky pay-per-view model, I expect Hearn will call Senior out and will say it as it is, that this is a blatant duck and that, uh, you know, Apparently there's a meeting happening on Monday where Eubank Senior is going to press a Sky into changing their percentages. I think it's highly unlikely Sky are going to change their percentages for uh, Eubank Junior. You know, it's not like Eubank Junior is a mega established pay-per-view star. This would be his pay-per-view debut, and uh, you know it's one of those things where if you give an inch with the Eubanks, they'll take a mile. You know, if you gave them five percent extra this time, they'd want twenty-five percent next time. You know, so I expect Sky won't negotiate. Uh, it seems to be that uh, the Eubanks may not take the fight as a result of that. You know, we'll have to see how things develop. Uh, but it will be it will be very telling. Uh, you know, it'll be very telling if after all of that, the Eubanks don't take the Golovkin fight. Let me know your thoughts, guys. How do you think Eubank looked against Duran? Um, do you agree with me that there's some major defensive frailties in his game, and that a fighter who can keep Chris on the outside? has a real chance. You know, if you've got a good enough jab to keep him on the outside, or if you've got slickness and movement to stop him dominating on the inside, then you've got a real chance of beating him, because I just don't believe this guy can block punches from range. Uh, and finally, let me know your thoughts on this Golovkin saga. Will he take the fight? Won't he take the fight? Have they just been using Golovkin's name to hype the situation? Uh, you know, give me your take. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button. Do leave your comments below if you agree, disagree, whatever. And if you're new, please do subscribe. Uh, I've rambled on for much longer than I anticipated in this video, so I'm going to do separate videos now on uh, on Joshua and Groves, because otherwise it will take me too long to upload. But I will, uh, yeah, there'll be videos coming on Joshua and Groves pretty soon. I also want to do another video with my scoring for the Furman uh, Porter fight, so uh, stay tuned. Thanks, guys.